There is a circular memo that went viral yesterday. This memo is believed to have come from Cleophas Malala, Order Secretary General. If you go through that memo, the memo is warning order leaders against debating Nairobi Senator Edwin Sifuna. The memo also claims that there is a conspiracy by the Kenyan media to portray order leaders as intellectually challenged. Let's have a look at the memo briefly before we continue. For immediate release, it has become increasingly clear that there is a media conspiracy in Kenya intended to paint the older party as a home of intellectually challenged people by pitting our members against Nairobi Senator Edwin Sifuna during TV talk shows. The purveyors of this conspiracy have gone ahead to ambush older MPs and senators with complex questions meant to show that the cream of our party is unable to break down His Excellency, President Dr. William Ruto's agenda to the people during their media appearances. So the memo is claiming that there is a media conspiracy to paint older leaders as intellectually challenged. It goes on to say, to avoid further embarrassing episodes, the party is now pulling the plug on the appearance of its members alongside Senator Sifuna in any show regardless of the media house hosting it. By this communication, members and elected leaders of UDA are, are henceforth required to confirm with media houses if Sifuna is part of any show they are invited to and immediately decline the invitation if he is on board. This decision is occasioned by the desire of the party to project the ideologies of His Excellency Dr. William Ruto in a way that minimizes embarrassment and humiliation to the party and its leadership. Senator Honorable Cleophas Malala, Order Secretary General. This memo has been going viral as from yesterday. A few hours today, I checked order official pages, online pages. They have not come out to deny this memo. They have not confirmed it and they have also not denied it. They have not termed it fake. And that leaves us with one conclusion that this might be an authentic leaked memo from Uda. It might be authentic. And I'm saying that because if you look at the language of that memo, if you have followed Uda very keenly, this is their kind of reasoning and language. But putting the authenticity aside, this memo is bringing to form some hard facts that I want to highlight on. If you are watching us, but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe in order not to miss our next analysis. Let's continue. In summary, the memo is warning order leaders not to debate Edwin Sifuna the memo also claims there is a conspiracy by Kenyan media to portray older leaders as intellectually challenged. Where is the truth in all this, ladies and gentlemen? 
Listen to this order leader before we dig deep. Our former Prime Minister, Raida Amor Odinga, we are coming to arrest you and my friend, be warned. If the Kandera people, if the Kandera police get you, you are in hot soup. <laughs> Mr. Amor Odinga, if the Kandera OCP do come for you, you know why even today, chickens don't urinate. That's Kandara member of parliament. And you are hearing him abusing Raido Dingo for no reason at all. Can that leader or such kind of a leader debate Edwin Sifuna? Can such a leader have a meaningful debate with Edwin Sifuna? Let's now listen to another one. Honorable Speaker, the economy of Kenya in 2023 grew faster than the economy of China. The economy of Kenya, Honorable Speaker, in 2023 grew by many multiples, actually, the economy of the United States of America. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, I want to thank this House for the good policies that we have put in place that is leading to accelerated economic growth in our country. That's Ndindi Nyoro. Ndindi Nyoro is comparing Kenya to China and the United States of America. Comparing the economic growth of a developing country to that of a developed country. Can such a character debate somebody like Edin Sifuna? I want us to put all this into perspective for Kenyans to understand the truth behind this memo that has been circulating for some days now. Let's dig deep. Just as I did say when we were starting, this memo appears to me as an authentic leaked memo from other party. And so far the party has not denied or termed it fake. But even if they were to term it fake, I still believe this is a leaked memo from other party. The writing and the messaging of that memo betrays other party. That's the kind of a thinking in other party. When you see a whole deputy president saying this is a shareholding government, which kind of a mentality is that? When you see a whole president, somebody who should be a symbol of national unity, making appointments from only two tribes, that's the kind of a thinking mentality in other party. Sometimes they are too petty to a point you can't just understand whether they were ready and qualified for national leadership. For those who have been following these TV debates, in most occasions, Edwin Sifuna normally debates these older leaders. Truth be said, the debates end up exposing, embarrassing the older leaders in that they are being exposed as totally naive, totally clueless on governance issues. I think that's what has informed the circulation of this memo. Other party, having observed what has been going on, they could not just let that continue. So they had to find an exit strategy from the debates in order to avoid debating Edwin Sefuna. And just as we have been seen before, they always find somebody to blame. In this case, they are blaming the media that there is a conspiracy 
to paint Uda leaders as intellectually challenged. It's actually true. A good majority of them who have been coming for those debates are coming out clearly as intellectually challenged. When Dindinyoro compares a developing country and a developed country, that shows clearly the kind of intellectual challenge we have in Uda. A developed country is developed. A developing country is expected to develop faster mm -hmm. than the one that has developed. Uda cannot understand those simple concepts, ladies and gentlemen. Let me stop it there. But as I stop, it's almost certain, and this is a fact, I'm not taking sides here. If you look at Uda party, and then you look at the opposition, in this case, Azimio, Uda party has got so many leaders who are not qualified to hold public offices. Most of them were accused of corruption, some rape, some murder, some even never went to school. We are seeing they're being given top government positions. Look on how areas that supported Rutum do elect their leaders. The dirtier you are, the more appealing you become to that kind of a population. So if you are a rapist, for example, you can easily find yourself being elected in that part of the country. And these are facts, ladies and gentlemen. Look on how Azimio areas do vote. They vote professionals and intellectuals, people who are up to the task. Let's meet in our next analysis.